change the equation? Because obviously you haven't had that much more evaluation for you. You haven't had the ball. From the grades perspective, things can change. And, you know, you also have to project how they're going to do at the academy. And, you know, it's such a long game you have to play. How, how much more difficult is that when you're committing to kids, kids are committing to do this it, or It absolutely is. And, um, you know, I think, you know, guys are probably making decisions a little bit earlier. They want to make a decision a little bit earlier, yet still, you know, they during that senior year, they have to take a solid math, have to take a solid science, and in many cases need to continue to test. So, um, yeah, there, that, that, that is a challenge. Why why has it shifted a little bit? And I realize you had some guys before, yeah. but it just seems like the numbers are still um, I don't know a lot. There are more, though, this year. Um, I don't know why. You know, I don't know if kids, I, I, I don't know if I really have a, if I can pinpoint an answer why. Are you guys making Real, oops, a concerted effort? Off. Can you talk oh. into the mic, please? Oh, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you guys making a concerted effort to get commitments faster, or is it, um, or is the no, competitive landscape? I, you know, I think, I, I think part of it is, I, I do think more kids get on campuses earlier, or maybe, if you were to pick in the year 2000, most kids really didn't come to a campus until their senior year of high school, where now they're doing it their sophomore year going to games, or junior year definitely going and seeing a bunch of campuses. I think that's a part of the expedite, you know, that's one reason why I think it happens a little bit faster. The other part is, um, is I think other schools are nudging guys to make decisions sooner where you alluded to it, it's true. We want to see a little longer academic track record. And, and yet maybe that environment's changed a little bit in order to be able to be competitive we have to make some adjustments. Well, you know, talking to Utah State's coach, they had 39 openings on their, you know, scholarships. 30 of them went to transfers, four-year guys, Juco guys, only nine high schools. Do you think there's a larger trend that maybe just not as many high school kids are being offered getting their spots? And so the, the, the demand is so much less that they need to jump on opportunities faster? Um, perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Um, I don't, you know, I think it, I think we're a little bit different, though, again, I mean, the test part of it is, you know, just, I mean, God, I, I think there are a good number of Ivy Leagues that still are test optional. Um, there are a good number of Power Five schools, almost, almost all that are test optional. And, you know, so for us, it's, um, I don't, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe that is a little bit. But the commitment isn't binding. I mean, so if they could commit now, not get the test score. And yeah. Now, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully we don't you know, we don't engage with the kid unless we feel like there is a really, really strong. We wouldn't. We would not engage with the kid unless we felt like there was a really strong chance they were in good shape academically, in conduct, and the whole bit to come to the academy. Uh, coach. Um, I'll start, I'll start on the offense, so uh, obviously you're going to have to replace the production of Brad Roberts, uh, you know, John Leo, there's a third will help with that, but specifically at the fullback, uh, who, are, who are some of the guys that you expect to fill that void? Well, I don't know how. <laughs> no, uh, obviously not uh, 17 on table. Yeah, um, and that really wasn't, you know, your, your choice isn't to only have one guy get a gigantic part of the yeah. carries. He, um, he was just really that unique of a player. Um, you know, as we came out of the spring, the three guys that probably had the most reps there um, were Jed Harris, Owen Burke, and um, a sophomore Dylan Carson, a sophomore Darius, um, a sophomore Dylan Carson got most of them, and then probably the other one was John Lee Eldridge played some at that. He, he played, really spent most of spring at that position. I don't know if he'll, he'll be there Wait, this fall. Back? He did. Wow. I know. Yeah. Now I don't know if that's necessarily what we'll do this season, but, but he did. Now. He did in the spring. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, for the defensive side of the ball, uh, a lot of those positions are going to be very solid. But uh, maybe one of the positions that that doesn't apply to is uh, the boundary corners. Uh, you know, I know there's Jamari Bellamy uh, that'll have to step up, but 
Uh, how are you feeling about your, your corners going on this year? Well, we'll, uh, we'll get into that action, you know, and see. Uh, you know, certainly the things that we want to do is we want guys that will, will get up there and really, really get involved with receivers. Um, we do not want our guys playing 10 yards off unless it's purely for a situational purpose. Um, and so we'll get into it. You know, there's, you know, whether it's Corey Collins or Trey Williams or Levi Brown or Jamari Bell. I mean, there are some guys that will do a good job there. Uh, and then just last question. Um, so, you know, obviously you've had a ton of success uh, during your time in the Mountain West, but uh, there hasn't been a conference championship. Uh, so I'm wondering if the team – has the team kind of marked that Mountain West Championship on the wall as that's the goal, or is it more just we'll go one game at a time, we'll, we'll put the work in, and we'll see where it goes from there? Yeah, it has not been a focus, and it won't be a focus. For us, what we'd like to do is, is we have to improve. You know, you look, I think any time you lose a quarterback that had that many starts, you know, he was a three-year starter, uh, God, we lost like four of our, maybe five of our top six rushers, uh, and we lost our most talented receivers too. Amari Terry, the big plays that he makes against Army or in the bowl game against Baylor. Um, David Cormier, the huge play that he made against Navy. Uh, just the significant catches that he made against Army. You know, we, we have a lot that we have to replace. And I think defensively, um, we had three tremendous players uh, in Chris Herrera. It's rare we get a 6'5 guy that bends that well as Chris did. Uh, as a defensive tackle, T.D. Blackman, his leadership as one of our captains and his sheer productivity, especially in the service academy games. And then Vince Sanford, I think Vince Sanford and Jordan Jackson might have been two of the best players that we've had at the Air Force Academy on the defensive side of the ball in the last maybe 18, 20 years. And so we, 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 have, a, we have a lot of, I mean, I, I'm, I literally, I was thinking back, have we ever had something like this? And no team, no two team, teams are ever the same, and we did. After, after our 2012 season, we had a rush with Cody Getz that was one of the best in the nation. And we're trying to replace him. We had some really, really good players on defense, Brian Lindsay and Alex Means, and we had to replace them. And our next year, that was a real challenge. So it took us a while for our program to get back on footing to be able to become a bowl team. And that may be the case with where we are now, too. You know, just just like it was 10 years ago. Are any of the guys from last year going to camps with anybody? Um, not us right now, no. I remember last year uh, you compared Boise State quarterback Taylor Green to Vince Young. I wanted to see, mm -hmm. now after playing him, if that held true to you and, and that was what the experience was like. You know, not only on that particular day, but I thought as the season progressed, my goodness, it's scary the way he kept getting better and better, you know, down the stretch of second half of that season. Boise State does uh, a lot of work to get ready for the triple option. I was wondering how they stack up against the other teams that you face in terms of defending the triple option. Uh, are you asking just whenever they've faced teams maybe that run a similar offense? They're that, against you guys. Uh, so when they've played us, yeah. you're saying? How is their yeah. defense against you compared to other defenses in the Mountain West? Well, I mean, obviously, they are, they are incredibly talented, right? I mean, you, um, you know, you look at a good number of positions, uh, the background of those guys for how highly they were recruited, and understandably so. You know, you just look at the facilities and the investment, uh, the history, the tradition that they have. Um, they're, they're really, really, really good. And then the number of guys that are much, much older guys because they support the opportunity 
to play in a fifth and a sixth year, which absolutely matters because that's time and grade. That's experience in your program. Uh, my last question I wanted to ask, uh, are you, what, what are your thoughts on Andy Avalos heading into his third year as a head coach now and what he's already accomplished at Boise State so far? Yeah, they've done really, really good things, and uh, and even and it's going to be even more so heading into the future. I mean, they have some really, really good players, and, um, and they've done a heck of a job with those guys.